Cation Exchange Capacity, or CEC for short. It's one of the things that Darren and I use all the time, and we talk to you about this all the time as well. On your soil test, we want to see that CEC number, and we'll talk about why today. Well, it gives us a guideline of what we have for holding capacity in the soil, how much water we can hold, how many nutrients we can hold, and it's not an exact science of, oh, you can hold exactly three pounds of phosphorus more in this soil than that but it does give you a pretty good rough idea of where you can start. And when you think about cation exchange capacity, there are really three things that comprise that figure, cation exchange capacity. It's the type of clay you have in the soil, the amount of clay you have in the soil, and the amount of organic matter that's there as well. A lot of people talk about heavy soil. Oh, I have heavy soil. Well, how heavy is it? Because in our area of the country, I consider 25 or 30 CEC a heavy soil, but in other areas of the country, they might call 12 or 15. That's their heavy soil. The reason why we want a number is so it allows us to specifically manage our fields better. What we use this cation exchange capacity for in terms of nitrogen management is we'll talk quite often about nitrogen holding capacity is roughly 10 times your CEC. So if your soil has a 12 CEC, multiply that times 10, you can hold roughly 120 pounds. Now that's not an exact number, but that's gonna get you relatively close. And it's a definite difference between, oh, I wanna put 250 pounds of nitrogen on, I have heavy soil. <laughs> okay, no, no, you don't. You don't have heavy enough soil. If you had a 35 CEC, then I would say, yeah, maybe you are right. Maybe you can hold 200, 250 pounds of nitrogen without any real problem. So this is one of the big things. But in addition to that, we use it for other things like how much tile do I need in a, in a field? How close together do those tile spacings need to be? Uh, it, just overall water holding, nutrient holding capacity, your ability in that soil to hold everything, that's really what that CEC is. And to influence that CEC, you're obviously not going to change the type of clay that's in your soil or the amount of clay you have in your soil. What you can try to influence is organic matter. And as soon as we say that, there are people across the country that say, oh no, you can't change organic matter. It would take forever to do that. Well, what's your definition of forever? Kind of like the definition of a heavy soil changes depending on where you're at. Well, if your definition of forever is 10 years, oh, okay, well then, yeah, it will take forever to make some significant changes. If you say, what, 10 years? Yeah, and over 20 years, and over 30 years, over your farming career, you can dramatically change many soils to improve your cation exchange capacity, to improve your organic matter, just by the farming practices that you do, by reducing tillage, by using crops that have lots of roots. So organic matter can be changed over time just by making the right choices. I guess the last thing that I really wanted to say here with cation exchange capacity is, I know that not every lab runs this, and I know some people will tell you, oh, you don't need CEC, but I'm here today to tell you, you absolutely need to find out what the cation exchange capacity is of your soil. It's going to allow you to better manage your farm. It's a simple, cheap, easy test to run. It's no big deal, just get it done. And you can look for more information about this uh, on our website, agphdsoiltest.com, at midwestlabs.com. There's plenty of good information out there, but just real simply said, we need to have this so we can make better recommendations for your farm. If you look at many pre-emerge herbicide labels, one of the things that they'll say is they'll adjust the rate based on CEC. We'll talk about some of the best pre- and post-herbicides to stop our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show.